Hey, good morning everyone, Kyle here. If you asked for it, you got it. Today we're doing a complete walkthrough of a song from start to finish, working with it in Logic and bringing it into main stage so that you can use it uh, in a performance. I'm going to be using the song God, You Are My God, which I got uh, for free actually from loopcommunity.com. If you haven't been to the site, you have to check it out. A lot of great resources for people like you and me, um, and, uh, and they're always having free stuff they're giving out and, uh, and contests, so it's excellent. So I'm going to be using that song today, and let's begin. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to be trying to work uh, with uh, with no templates today. I want you to sh I want to show you guys everything uh, from start to finish without any shortcuts. The exception being, I'm going to use my main stage template because that's uh, that's what I do every time, and uh, you guys will have a template that you use for main stage as well. So that's where it's going to be a little different. I'll start off by creating a software instrument. Um, <clears throat> what I received from Loop Community was the cues for the song God, You Are My God, as well as a loop for it. So I'm going to create a click now. I'm going to reset this software instrument. Okay. Select the, <coughs> the plugin Klopfgeist. This is Logic's metronome plugin. A couple presets here on the left. I'll pick a couple. You can hear what they sound like. You can even use the built in keyboard by clicking caps lock on my computer. Yeah, that's not a great metronome. That's all right. I kind of like that. So we'll use that. I'll just call this click. Control click to add an empty MIDI region. And when I double click on that, we're able to plug in MIDI notes here. Um, my secondary click is <clears throat> the, uh, the pencil. And I'm just drawing in one bar of time in the song's 4-4 four, four, uh, time signature. Let's hear what it sounds like. I don't like how these are so close and pitched to that. And this could even be higher. This could also be a little louder, maybe. Not ear piercing. Cool, that'll work. So we have one bar of metronome. There's no sense in doing that for every bar when we can simply uh, copy and paste it. Apple C, Apple V. Four bars. I'm just going to make a bunch of bars. I don't know how many bars my song will end up being, so let's put too many. Cool, the click is done. Add a new track. This time it's an audio track because I'm going to be bringing in the WAV file from Loop Community. <clears throat> Control click to add a WAV or to add a file. Here's what I received. Uh, they gave me the cues only, the stereo loop, uh, as well as um, a split, a left and right pan of the two. So I'm not interested in the in the pan version. I just want first this cues only. And now I'll do the same thing to add a new track. Audio. Stereo loop. Let's rename these so we don't get confused. Cues. And uh, they've also included the um, BPM info here, so 115. I'm going to adjust my counter to 115. And let's play it from the top and see if my click is synced up to uh, the cues and loop. One, two, three, intro. Yeah, sounds good. Let's put our cues up a little. And so put up to like here. <clears throat> Perfect. So you've got that down. Uh, the last thing we need before we can export these is the markers. So I'm going to uh, put an intro marker by putting control or by uh, hitting control click here. Create marker. Control click again to rename. Call this intro. And then 
an easy way of getting a sense for where the next marker is, uh, if you don't want to just listen to the whole song, is open up the WAV file for the cues. Zoom out a little bit. And every kind of peak in the WAV file is going to be the cues signaling the, the beginning of the next section. So measure 9, you can see. Okay, so verse. Let's look over here. Twenty-five. One, two, three, chorus. Thirty-three. Okay. Uh, let's see, so we were on 34, 49 is the next one. Bridge. Do that. That was an accident. Okay, so 79. Two, three, 105. Almost done. One, two, three, bridge. One twenty-two. Let's see if we want the click to die out right there. Okay, so I'm gonna use our scissors tool. Get rid of the cues from there. And the end of the song looks like it's 141 here. And I'll bring the end of the song marker to 141. And simple as that. The three tracks with the markers in place. If I want to see all the markers in the list, you can click on lists and markers, and there they are. It's also a good way of globally adjusting all markers if you need to add four measures to everything. And at this point, I'm going to do file, export, all tracks as audio files? Nope. There we go. And I'm going to put them in what I call my repository, or my samples repository. So main stage samples. Anytime for every song that I do this export, I only do it once, and I just put it in a folder. So let's pretend we're making a new folder here. Uh, two. Okay, for your track speed bounce, calf. Uh, for, for best practice, let's include that. And we'll export. <clears throat> At this point, I would normally save this logic file. Uh, so that I could edit it again if I need, if I want to adjust the roadmap, if I want to add a new uh, part to uh, to the loop, but we won't do that this time. And let's pull up uh, main stage. Okay. Do file new. And I'm just going to open up the template that I have. <coughs> 
So here's the template. We're going to save as because uh, I want a dedicated concert file to uh, what's going to be I'll call weekend jams. I'm not going to include assets because I don't want those samples to copy over into another folder only for this concert. That'd be a waste and take up space. So instead, I'll just have them referenced where they are in the repository. Weekend jams saved. Song one, I'll rename. God, you are my God. I right, so click on attributes, and the tempo was 115. I'll load my, my click sound here. There it is. Uh, you can see it is given a suffix to the track name too, so another pointer to make sure you label your track names correctly. Next, we'll do the cues. Finally, the loop. Okay, all three components are loaded. I'm just going to click on my patch list here. I like to just kind of reset it, refresh it. Um, okay, and now. One, two, three, intro. You can see it's all queued up, ready to go. I want to start from the chorus. Solo the click. Everything, uh, everything works as soon as we load it in. And uh, we don't obviously want to do this every time. We don't want to have to load these playback plugins for the same song. So once I've got everything the way I want it, I'm going to Apple E on the patch. That's an export. Put it into my third repository. This is my patches repository. Second repository being just the sets. So this whole concert could go in that repository. Uh, patches, and I put it in here. I'll call it, God, you're my God, too. So that way, if I'm, I'll delete all of this. Um, if I'm playing next week uh, the same song, I can simply open up a blank concert, Apple I, for import. Here's all my patches. I'll select the one I just exported. There it is. Everything's loaded. It referenced the same files in the repository. One, two, three, intro. Good to go. Cool, I hope that answers uh, some questions for you guys. If you have any more questions, let me know. If you want to see any other specific videos, let me know. And thanks again for your interest, guys. Have a great day.